Hello there, my fellow loyal battle brothers, and welcome back to our sub-series from the Space Marine Armory, which we're calling Space Marine Vehicles. Last time I talked about the Predator tank of the Astartes, and in doing that I kinda screwed the pooch. That's because, as someone reminded me later, it is the Rhino chassis which stands at the base of almost all Astartes vehicles. So today I'm gonna rectify that and talk about, you guessed it, the Rhino APC. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Rhino APC has been in the Imperium service for over 10 millennia, but its actual origins stretch back even further. Curiously, the surviving documents on the past of the Rhino APC are almost completely intact, and do give an accurate early history of the vehicle. Ancient records show that the Rhino originally began life as the RH-1-N-O Tracked Exploration and Multipurpose Defense Vehicle, for use by colonists and explorers of humanity spread throughout the galaxy colonizing new worlds. The Rhino was a standard template construction, or STC design. The human colonists of the Dark Age of Technology needed a robust, tracked, all-terrain vehicle sealed against hostile environments and providing some measure of protection against potential hostiles. The first Rhino was field tested on Mars and proved to be a great success. As it was capable of being constructed from almost any locally available materials, and powered by nearly any fuel source, the popularity of the Rhino quickly spread. Soon, Rhinos became common sights on frontier worlds all across human space. The Rhino's position of dominance came to an end with the Age of Strife, as mankind's golden age of technology and interstellar exploration ended in bloody warfare, engulfing almost every human colony. By the end of the Age of Strife, and the emergence of the Emperor of Mankind, almost all the complete STC databases from the Age of Technology had been lost or utterly destroyed. The remaining rhinos were slowly wiped out by attrition. Only the work and dedication of the newly formed Adeptus Mechanicus saved the rhino and several other STC designs of ancient technology from being lost forever. The reliability of the original Rhino design meant that it had changed very little over the intervening millennia. Nowadays, only the most trusted Imperial Adepta have access to the Rhino APC. No Imperial Guard for you. The technology of their creation is too valuable to be risked with any but the most trusted of Imperial forces. The Adeptus Astartes, the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Adeptus Sororitas, the Adeptus Arbites, the Adeptus Custodes, and the Free Ordos of the Inquisition all use Rhinos as their main transport vehicle. The earliest known use of the Rhino in combat is recorded in the ancient Liber Armorum. According to this document, it was first used in combat by human colonists on Torben's world against unknown indigenous Xenos creatures possessing only a primitive technological level. The rhinos formed the spearhead of the human colonists' attack, against which the alien primitive black powder firearms proved very ineffective. The Xenos were purged from Torben's world, leaving the colonists' settlement unimpeded. Over the following 100 years, the use of the rhino spread to many human military forces. Early commanders adopted the basic chassis design as an armored fighting vehicle, fitting multiple new weapon systems to it and augmenting the vehicle's engine power. In time, the vehicle became the standard fighting vehicle for human armed forces across the galaxy. Rediscovered STC databases provided the early Imperial armies with Rhino variants still in use today, such as the Predator, the Immolator, or the Whirlwind. There are many other variants now lost to the depths of time, only awaiting rediscovery. Due to its STC roots, the Rhino can be built with almost any suitable locally available material, including wood. Nah, just kidding. 
In addition to this, a pintle mounted storm bolter may be fixed to the APC's top hatch, which can be operated by an additional Space Marine serving as the gunner. All the Space Marines inducted into an Astartes chapter are trained to operate the Rhino as part of their basic training. A Rhino is capable of carrying up to 10 fully armored Space Marines within its well-protected hull. It is probable that the Rhino is capable of carrying twice that number of normal humans due to their smaller size compared to the power-armored Astartes. Access to a Rhino is gained via four doors and hatches. Disembarkation can be achieved through the hydraulic rear ramp and two side doors. There is also a hatch on the top of the vehicle, which provides its passengers with an opening from which to fire their weapons. It also provides a quick escape in event of catastrophic damage, or if the other doors are jammed. The Rhino is powered by two Mark II Mars pattern adaptable combustion engines. Each engine runs like a dynamo, which in turn runs two electric motors and recharges the engine's batteries. Every dynamo is attached to its engine using a power coupling, and is independent of the other engines. Should an engine be damaged in combat, there will be a reduction in the APC speed, but the other motor will continue to move the drive wheel. The engines are fed by a fan-assisted air intake, providing the oxygen for the combustion chamber. Every engine has its own fuel tank and a separate oxygen supply. This means that if there is no oxygen, or the operating environment requires the air intakes to be sealed, the engines will still have the oxygen they require. Rhinos can also be equipped with a number of enhancements, including dozer blades, extra armor plating, a hunter-killer missile launcher, improved communications gear, a searchlight, and smoke launchers. The Adeptus Mechanicus has established strict guidelines concerning the construction and maintenance of these valuable war machines. The purity and spiritual welfare of the vehicle's machine spirit is thought to be as important as the skill of the artificers who created the vehicle. There are many rituals surrounding the construction, maintenance and use of a rhino. They must be cared for using the correct liturgies of maintenance by the attending tech priest. Like all Space Marine vehicles, the construction of a Rhino is akin to a religious ritual. At every stage, the correct oils must be applied and incense burned to sanctify the process and ward off demons and gremlins from getting into the vehicle and working their shenanigans. As these rituals are cast, every armored panel is inscribed with protective sigils to ward against damage and help protect the vehicle's occupants. Components are checked and blessed before being installed. Finally, when the Rhino is complete, the ceremony of commissioning is undertaken. The tech priest calls upon the spirit of the machine god to fill the Rhino with its spiritual power. The final blessing is the naming ritual. Every new vehicle must have a name worthy of the great history of the chapter it is to serve. The name is recorded, and some chapters choose to paint or engrave it onto the vehicle's armored hull. There are many different marks and patterns of the standard Rhino and its chassis in use throughout the Imperium, including the following. The Mark 1B Mars Pattern This is the oldest mark of the Rhino that is still used in the Imperium. It closely resembles the Deimos pattern Rhino, but lacks its turret-mounted bolters. The Mark 1B is no longer constructed in the 41st millennium, as these vehicles are viewed as being past their prime. But they are still maintained and sometimes even used by Adeptus Astartes chapters as a sign of respect for tradition. The Deimos pattern Rhino this one is arguably the second oldest pattern of the Rhino in use by the Imperium. The Deimos pattern was first used by the Adeptus Astartes during the Great Crusade. It is equipped with two turret-mounted bolters which are slave to the vehicle's target lodges or cogitator system. This pattern has also several different marks, such as the Mark 1C, which is the most prevalent. 
An unknown mark of the Deimos Rhino chassis is used in the construction of older, lesser known Rhino variants, such as the Deimos Predator and its variants, the Deimos Predator Infernus and the Deimos Predator Executioner. A venerable STC design, the durable, proven Rhino chassis, serves as the foundation for an entire range of Adeptus Astartes battle tanks, each modified to better serve a particular role. During the fabrication of a Rhino, tech priests perform a wide range of rituals before the ceremony of commissioning is undertaken. As part of the process, the temperament of the vehicle's machine spirit is assessed and some of them are destined to return to the forges to be outfitted as one of the many variants. The Space Marines are not alone in making use of this invaluable chassis, as other forces of the Imperium, like the Sisters of Battle or the Adeptus Arbites, also use the Rhino Corps for their own special purpose vehicles. Among the most common and famous variants are the following. The Razorback. This one is another APC, but a bit more heavily armed. The Predator main battle tank. I already made a video on this one. The Whirlwind. This one is basically a long-range Space Marine support vehicle, and is, in actuality, a mobile rocket launcher tank. The Vindicator, which is a siege tank for the Space Marines. The Saber Tank Hunter, which, like the name says, is an anti-armor tank. The Immolator, which is the APC used by the Adepta Sororitas, which also has a lot of flamethrowers. The Exorcist, which is the Adepta Sororitas version of the Whirlwind. The Repressor, which is a more heavily armed APC used by both the Adeptus Arbites and the Adepta Sororitas. Finally, the Rhino Primaris, which is pretty much a Rhino on steroids, with everything about it bigger and better. Also, it is commonly used as a command vehicle. A couple of famous Rhinos include... Nocturne's Hammer. Nocturne's Hammer is a Rhino of the Salamander Space Marine chapter, and is one of the oldest functioning Rhinos in the entire Imperium. It is said that this vehicle was used by Vulcan himself during the siege of Devlin's fastness, carrying him out through the gates and into the middle of the encircling Word Bearer's Traitor Legion. The hammer has been in the service of the chapter for over eight millennia, and has its own special place within the Salamander's reliquary. At the dawn of every new century, the chapter's tech marines gather in the reliquary and the master of the forge strikes the vehicle's activation rune upon the vehicle's engine. It is said that if the engine doesn't start on the first time, then doom shall befall the salamanders. Barbarus, not to be confused with Mortarion's homeworld. Barbarus is a chaos rhino of the World Eater's traitor legion that was supposedly present at the Battle of Terra during the siege of the Imperial Palace. It was identified on many occasions afterwards as being the personal vehicle of the warlord Cossalax the Forsworn. Finally, before I take my leave for today, some technical details about the Rhino. There are 35 known patterns, its crew consists of one driver and one gunner if the turrets are not remotely controlled. Its power plant is a Quad Mark II adaptable thermic combustor reactor. It weighs 30 tons. Its length is 6.6 .6 meters. Its width is 4.5 meters. Its height is 3.6 meters. Its maximum speed on road is 70 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off-road is 55 km an hour. Its transport capacity is 10 Astartes, but it cannot carry Astartes in Terminator armor or with jump packs. Its superstructure armor is 60 mm, and its hull armor is another 60 mm. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Rhino APC for today. 
As you can see, definitely one of the most common and useful vehicles of the Space Marines and not only. Are you a fan of the Rhino? What do you like about it? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Also, you can rest assured that I will make samples for the next vehicles to be covered in this series. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.